After I built a square collet block, I decided to make a collet chuck for my mill. I settled on and run out adjustable design also known as set true. This is the finished chuck. I built this milling machine in 2005 and it sees almost daily use. As you see I use a 100mm 3-jaw lathe chuck to hold tooling. And as on the lathe the 3-jaw chuck is very convenient to use. Now many of you might be looking in horror at the use of a 3-jaw chuck on a mill. However, bear in mind that the range of cutter shank diameters is limited. This chuck is a very good quality and never used on a lathe. Also the adapter plate to which the chuck is bolted allows me to adjust the runout like a set true chuck. This results in very limited runout. Mind you, this mill has its own collets and I resort to them when I run out of Z axis. I bought a set of Chinese collets as a lark. However, the quality impressed me and I decided to build a collet chuck for the mill. A set true design is better suited for lathe use but a set true design would cater for any inaccuracy in the mill spindle. Also I like the challenge. The mill I built has a proprietary taper similar in shape to an R8. I shall machine the taper in one setup. Here I am turning down stock. The front on this part has a shoulder on which the chuck shall be fitted. I fitted my lathe with an auto carriage stop which makes repetitive cuts much easier. And the auto carriage stop disengages, right where it should. The shank diameter is then turned. To cut the taper, the dial indicator is set square to the compound. Compound is angled at 7 degrees. The compound is moved by 20 millimeters. Using trigonometry, the dial indicator movement should be 20 times 10 7. The angle of the compound is adjusted till this reading is achieved. The taper is then cut. The rear end was then drilled and tapped for a drawbar. Finally a flat which shall engage with the mill spindle internal key is cut.
The flat is aligned with the notch on the spindle so that it engages with the internal key. The taper holds. Now to make the next part. This collar shall house four screws used to adjust the chuck radially. Here I am cleaning the bore of this section of seamless tubing. A shoulder is cut to seat a flange. This vernier is held by means of magnets and acts as a DRO. Finally the outside diameter is turned. Next, two flanges made from 8mm flat stock are machined. The two flanges are drilled in the center for an arbor. This shall allow me to turn them on the lathe. Here I am setting the mill's power feed. Selecting Z-axis, direction of feed and feed rate. Then I engage the Z-axis power feed to the jack screw. The excess material is cut off and the flange to be, is fitted on the arbor. The flange is then turned and faced.
hole saw is first used to remove most of the material form the flange center. Then the flange is bored. This flange shall be pressed onto the mill taper. The auto carriage stop is also useful when boring. The flange is pressed onto the mill taper. At the interface between the two parts, holes are drilled for keys. One key is screwed in, whilst the other is pressed in. In order to prevent imperfections in the mill shaft, the face of the flange shall be turned on the mill. The mill shall be used as a lathe. The x-axis power feed is selected. The flange is pressed in the collar. Two plug welds ensure retention. Finally, the rear of the collar is faced. <laughs> 